Hello, my name is Voltaire, and this is my co-host, Mr. Orville Dedenbacher, and this is the Lair of Voltaire, June 2012 video newsletter. Now, uh, those of you who watch the Lair of Voltaire religiously know that there wasn't a newsletter in May. It's not that there wasn't anything going on in May, it's just that it was so similar to what was going on in April, I didn't want to bore you to death. Shut up. In any case, um, this month is quite a difference because there's so much going on that I fear I won't be able to cram it all into this one episode, but I'm going to try. Without further ado, in this month's episode, you're going to see the cover art for the new album, Bitrectual. You're going to find out who the winner of the Bitrectual logo contest is. You're going to find out some disturbing things about Dresden Doll drummer Brian Viglione as we go behind the scenes on the recording of Bitrectual. You're going to find out a little bit about what's going on with Call of the Jersey Devil, including a first glance at the first illustration from Paul Carrick for that novel. And the first ever full-on look at the new vinyl toys. There's a lot going on, so let's get started. But first, let's talk about upcoming shows. Where am I playing next? July 21st, I'm in New Orleans at Fantasia 2. That's on Decatur Street. July 22nd, I'm in Dallas at The Church. July 29th, I'm in Birmingham, Alabama at PlayOnCon, and I return August 30th to DragonCon. All of the info is at voltaire.net slash calendar. Sign up for the mailing list and never miss a show near you. As many of you know, I had a little contest this month for uh, people to send in designs for the logo for the Bitrexual album. There were many, many entries and they were all really amazing. But at the end of the day, I had to choose one. And subsequently, the winner of the Bitrexual logo contest is Plasma Pool, which is a collective uh, involving Susanna Surd and Victor Torres. And they came up with this lovely logo that you see here. Now, you know, a lot of the people like the logos that had a lot of images and things of that nature, but the image on the album cover art is already pretty spectacular. So I needed something simple and crisp, and I really loved the insignia they came up with. So thank you so much, Plasma Pool. I will be sending you a hundred dollars and crediting you on the album, sending you a free copy of the album and a, probably a box of booty from the Lair of Voltaire. An honorable mention goes to Mr. Nathan Brent Cole, who unfortunately sent this entry in really uh, at the very, very last minute, a little bit after the judging had taken place, but it's so beautiful, I feel like I should use it for something involving the album. So uh, I may be contacting you, Nathan, because I might want to use it on something. In any case, it's gorgeous, and thank you so much to Nathan and to Plasma Pool and everybody who contributed in the contest. And without further ado, the moment you've all been waiting for, I teased a little bit on my Facebook page, but now you're going to see it for the first time ever, the cover art for Bitrexual. Here it is. Now is that not sexy? <laughs> This amazing artwork was created by Shamine King, a lovely lady who lives in Singapore, and uh, she contributed some fan art a couple of years ago. She did a drawing uh, depicting my song, This Ship's Going Down from To the Bottom of the Sea. I loved it so much, I used it for the poster for my Seattle show that year, and uh, we've kept in touch. I have seen her DeviantArt page and it's full of wonderfully pervy Star Wars art and I thought she would be perfect and as you can see, she is. So if you'd like to see more of Shamin's work, please visit her DeviantArt page right here. The recording has already begun on Bitrexual. I've recorded demos of all of the songs, and just this week, the incredible Mr. Brian Viglione, uh, very uh, well known for his work with the Dresden Dolls. He's exactly 
50% of the Dresden Dolls, came in and recorded drums for all of the songs. Now, uh, those of you who follow my antics might be aware that Brian played drums on my last album, Riding a Black Unicorn, and the album before that, Hate Lives in a Small Town. He was amazing on both, and this time was no different, except I did learn something interesting about Mr. Brian Viglione, because I figured since the album is called Bitrexual, I should ask him the hard question. So here's a little behind the scenes look of some of the antics in the studio. And now that the hard work is done, it's time for the hard question. So without further ado, I ask my friend Brian the tough question, Star Wars or Star Trek? I will say that I have a great affinity for both, grew up with both, and informed me beyond any doubt, as many people. But I have to pick Star Wars, if I picked anyone. So you're a Star Wars guy. I'm a Star Wars guy. Yoda, <laughs> you can't go wrong right there. That's it, in a nutshell. How about George Grant? George Grant, Star Wars or Star Trek? Hands down, Star Trek. Star Trek. And if you were any other man, I'd kill you where you stand. <laughs> uh, you know what I'm going to say? I'm bi-trexual. You probably already figured that out. How about uh, what race would you be? Wookiee. A Wookiee? Without a question. <laughs> You'd be a Wookiee? Wookiee. And I'll tell you why. Okay. A, I'm a furry. People may not know that, but here's a little insight into Brian's uh, oh, you know, no. psychosis right here. Um, he's a right-hand man to Han Solo. That's right. I'm a natural-born collaborator. This is my thing. I've uh -huh. got your back. I'm like right up there. Not the control panel, no problem. And I mean, he's the, an animal. <laughs> he's got that fucking release. I mean, that's just a beautiful cathartic scream right there. Wow. I'm Brian down. Brian Chewbacca. Wookie Viglione. Yes. Uh oh. You've, oh we've my got God. proof. Oh no! <laughs> Kapla. Kapla! I think that's the first time a phone has ever filmed another phone. And of course, I would be a Vulcan. But I'd have to be a funny, evil Vulcan. Ferengi. <laughs> Fuck you. Ferengi. You have the point. Oh, yeah, I'm getting, I'm getting umox. What do you make of that, Orville, huh? Would you have guessed Brian was a furry? <laughs> Those of you who have been reading the excerpts of my novel, Call of the Jersey Devil, on my Facebook page, know that it is now finished. I'm completely done writing it, and it is presently in the hands of a proofreader, making sure that I actually understand the meaning of all of the big words that I used. But any day now, uh, that manuscript should be back to me, and once it's back to me, I'm going to shop it around to some publishers. I hope that there's a publisher out there somewhere who will be interested in it, and if not, well, maybe I'll just self-publish it. Either way, I'm sure it'll get out there at some point sooner than later. Now, as you probably already guessed, I'm not much of an adult, and I like for there to be pictures in my books. So I uh, decided that it would be really, really cool if in this novel there were some old-timey illustrations, you know, almost like in an old, uh, what am I trying to say? No, that's not it. Um, like in Alice in Wonderland, for instance, where there would be beautiful drawings of the Jabberwock. So, uh... I commissioned an artist by the name of Paul Carrick to do some illustrations for the book. He's just turned in the very first one, and you're going to get to see it here for the very first time ever. This is the first illustration by Paul Carrick for Call of the Jersey Devil. It is the Jersey Devil itself. Look at that. Is that not magnificent? Very, very talented man, and you can see more of his art at his website right here. And if you go there, you will see that he specializes in H.P. Lovecraft art. I think he was a perfect choice. My film Odokuro is uh, beginning its big film festival run. It played just last weekend at the Roswell Sci-Fi Film Festival. Thank you very much, Roswell Sci-Fi Film Festival, for showing my film. And this weekend, it's playing at Fright Night, which is a horror film festival and convention in Louisville, 
Kentucky. They have some incredible guests, including Bruce Campbell, Sean Astin from Lord of the Rings, and Peter Davidson, the fifth doctor. So if you're anywhere near Louisville, Kentucky, please go check that out and look in the schedule and find out when my film Odokuro is playing and go take a look. For those of you who haven't seen it yet, here's a little clip. Be the ruler of us all, thinking us into being, nudging us into existence. Or perhaps they are an unthinking force like electricity, an energy that enters a vessel and brings it to life, coursing through our bodies, elevating us to a state of being. Most often, we seem to be mere puppets possessed by some demon, brought to life like reanimated monkeys into this world for the amusement of a malicious, all-seeing deity. What is life on this world anyway? Born instantly at odds with our environment, life is an endless stream of conflict. You may very well recognize that voice narrating the film. It is none other than the enigmatic and incredibly talented Mr. Gary Newman. What a pleasure and an honor to have Gary Newman, a legend, narrating my film. Thank you, Gary. I really, really appreciate it. Uh, this film won Best Animated Film at Dragon Con Film Festival last year, for which I am uh, shocked, appalled, and incredibly pleased, and I hope that it will continue to do well in the film festival circuit. Hopefully, as time progresses, I will have more news regarding where it's playing. And if you donated to that Indiegogo almost a year ago, I swear to you, that cursed DVD is almost finished. I learned a very valuable lesson. I learned a very valuable lesson, and that is... Never, ever, ever make a film about a cursed object. Last year, when I went on the Black Unicorn Cabaret Tour with This Way to the Egress and the Hell Blinky Sextet, the very first night of the show, we played in New Haven, Connecticut, and I met a delightful young man there by the name of Valtanen. And uh, Valtanen uh, gave me his business card, and I, I rather liked it, and I told him, you know, I have problems with business cards because I never know what to write on them, because I do lots of different things. And just the other day, I got a package in the mail, and it was... a box of business cards that Valtanen made for me. <laughs> Took the thinking out of the ordeal for me, made these beautiful cards using the image from Riding a Black Unicorn, and on the back, it succinctly says, musician, artist, filmmaker, and a whole bunch of my links to where you can see my work. Now, that alone would be pretty amazing, but look at this. Look at that. Valtanen took the time to sculpt this incredible business card holder. How incredibly thoughtful, but yet it gets better, because on top of that, he also made me this beautiful little super sculpy daddy. Look at this. And so I guess it should come as no surprise that Valtanen is the Lair of Voltaire's Human of the Month. Thank you, Valtanen. I really appreciate it. I should also point out that Valtanen makes very peculiar videos impersonating me, and they're really quite entertaining. So if you'd like to see them, go to Valtanen's YouTube page, and that's right here. Enjoy. In case you're wondering why Orville Dedenbacher is so incredibly excited to be wearing bunny ears, it's because the bunny apocalypse is coming back. Those of you may still have the Easter horror of Bunny Apocalypse uh, still fresh in your minds. And uh, if you look over my shoulder, you'll see some vinyl toys that we released with Toy 2R from Hong Kong uh, in conjunction with Adventure Quest Worlds. And as it happens, July, Friday the 13th, there will be another live event on Adventure Quest Worlds where I will appear in animated form with my evil teddy bear, Deddy, and the two of us will wreak some havoc. But rumor has it, the bunnies are coming back. And this time, they're not just any bunnies, they're glow in the dark. So there's a three bunny set we're releasing. It's uh, Death Bunny Nitro, Death Bunny Glycerin, and Death Bunny Necro, and you can see them for the very first time right here. If you have epilepsy and you want to get wasted, stare into the screen.
No, I'm just kidding. Don't. Please. Really. Seriously. Don't. Those vinyl bunnies will be coming to Voltaire.net slash store sometime in the next couple of weeks. Certainly by Friday the 13th of July, so look for them there in about a week or two. And while you're there, of course, I still have Urkor Malravenous, Daddy's True Form, and the Voltaire Store exclusive, Sleester Daddy. And I'm sure there'll probably be some kind of uh, bulk deal if you want to buy them all. So go take a look, Voltaire.net slash store in the next couple of weeks and you'll find them there. We should call Playboy, seriously. You should do a centerfold because you make for a really cute bunny. <laughs> I want to read Play Corpse. Well, that's all the news that's fit to tell here in June of 2012 in the Lair of Voltaire. Thank you for tuning in to the Lair of Voltaire. I really, really appreciate it. Please subscribe and like the video and all that crazy stuff, and hopefully there'll be many, 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 many more of these. See you next time.